Following the World Cup in Qatar a couple of months ago, we actually have finally started to have some sort of political conversation about the role of FIFA, the corrupt FIFA, as well as what certain countries are doing that in the name of football is affecting geopolitics and the other cultures around the world. There were a lot of issues in Qatar. We talked about how they were banning, of course, people from having any sort of political slogans, so-called political slogans, but they themselves were having uh, the pro-Palestinian uh, uh, bans and everything else. That was one thing, and they were in the pocket of the Iranian regime during the World Cup to attack the Iranian fans. That is another thing, but now it's coming home. Football is not coming home, but the Qataris are coming home to the UK. Manchester United, as a football club, have had a lot of issues over the past few years because of the Glazer family. Uh, the Americans who bought this club and were not really good at management and they made a bit of a mess. So the fans wanted them gone and rightly so. But now the conversation is about the next ownership. So you have some people from Saudi and some people from Qatar. And we have a couple of people. One person from here, Britannia, helps. Now they're all coming over to buy Manchester United. Qatar's Sheikh Jassim uh, is a... Uh, and, and many others are... They're putting in their bids to ensure that they have a chance to buy United. But in reality, the problem you have is that Qatar, in order to compete with Saudi, they are in the pockets of the Iranian regime. And it's not just some sort of xenophobia thing, because if it's not just someone who happens to be foreign. Um, these people are directly linked to the state of Saudi, to the state of Qatar. It's like, again, a, a, a CCP-linked a person or company try to buy another football club in this country. It's the same problem. There is a national security concern that has to be actually addressed, but no one is willing to talk about this because they say, well, we don't care about football. I don't care that you don't care about football, especially if you're in the political class, because you actually have to do something about the country itself. This is not some sort of protection. It's a rant against um, some sort of modernization or internationalism. So Jim, Jim Radcliffe uh, is actually the only one uh, who is going to be challenging the Qataris and the Saudis and all the others who are going to be trying to buy Manchester United. And you might say, that, well, it doesn't really matter because they're going to bring their money here. But again, why should we have a foreign government owning our things here? It's not just someone who's foreign. It's the foreign government. That's my issue. And because of that, it's no longer a debate about football. It's politics and it's culture and it's national security. And where is our Prime Minister and the Secretary of State? They're absolutely silent on issues like this. They're not even saying anything. And for those who say, well, what do you expect them to do? Well, even if some sort of statement is good enough for now, I'm, my expectations are low. But at least get, get the, the state, the establishment, the, the intelligence community to make sure there is basic vetting and there is some sort of mechanism to not do this. It's the job of Premier League um, and of course, we can't really rely on FIFA anymore or, or UEFA. You have to have some sort of some sort of regulation when it comes to protecting our interests in this country. Maybe we should ban foreign governments from buying our football clubs. Maybe that's common sense. Put Britain first, and I think it could work. But maybe that's a controversial view. But maybe I don't care because this, this is exactly something that we have to fix, as well as all the other issues around the country. Now let me know your thoughts in the comment section. You might agree or disagree with me. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.